Hey guys, Saw Simon here and thanks for stopping by my channel. Today we're going to talk about Friday the 13th the game and another 10 things you may or may not know about it. Some of the things I will be talking about will be about trivia, references, maybe some easter eggs, and some game mechanics I found that you may not know about yet. If you enjoy the video, hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment if you think there was something I missed, and hope you guys learned something new from the video. Here we go. In some of the cabins on certain cork boards, you can find a sale ad at the very bottom for hockey masks, specifically the kind our favorite killer likes to use. Just a simple and plain reference to where Jason might be getting his hockey masks, or where that fat guy got his from in part 3. There are 8 different counselors that you can play, all modeled after a typical horror movie ensemble of teenagers. The Chalk, The Stoner, The Party Girl, The Virgin, The Pimp. Some of these counselors look like victims of the Friday the 13th movie, such as Tiffany, who is modeled after the twins from Part 4. Others were created as part of the Kickstarter campaign for the game. These characters were created as a result of donated money, of which the makers of the game worked with you to render your person as the actual camp counselor in the game, with a few tweaks, I would imagine. Characters such as Eric LaChapa, Kenny Rydell, and Brad Wilson, and Adam are all modeled after actual real people who donated money to the game and got to be in it as a result. Keeping on the Kickstarter fun for a minute, the same thing can be said about it as it relates to naming some of the cabins and some of the photos you may find in those cabins. For instance, in one cabin you can find a picture that looks like Eric LaChapa. Chances are this guy donated a lot of money. Packages ranged from anywhere of $5 up to $10,000, which included being a character, naming a cabin, having your photo in the cabin, possibly designing one of Jason's kills, creating a trophy or an achievement depending on the system, and several other things that were included as a result of your donation. This was a cool way to add your support to the game as I said before, and to be a part of the Friday the 13th series and franchise. This one is an easter egg and a reference. Jenny Myers was portrayed and voiced by actress Christina Klebe, who was in the remake of Halloween by Rob Zombie in 2007. She played a character named Linda. The Jenny character's last name is based on the Myers family, which is a reference to Michael Myers and the Halloween franchise. This is an important easter egg for one good reason. Without the original Halloween by John Carpenter, Friday the 13th may not have existed as it was created to cash in on the movie horror success of Halloween. Rob Deere is the name of the douche that dies at the start of every match. If you saw my first 10 things video, then you know why he is around. And if you are lucky enough to find him again during your match, chances are you will find him in some random bathtub, dead as shit. This is cool because it keeps in line with Jason hiding his victims during the movies to keep them out of sight, and when they are finally found to scare that person into giving themselves away, or slowing them down long enough for Jason to catch up to them and kill them. Before Dear Old Deer was getting chopped, macheted, and even speared, it was Tiffany Cox that was getting killed at the start of every match in the game. And the beta version, that is, anyway. I find it odd that they would have switched this character out, but my guess is whatever they are working on for the campaign mode of the game will somehow feature the character Rob Deere as part of it either as an NPC or as some kind of playable character for part of the sequence. Only time will tell on this front, though, but that's just my two cents. If you have played Jason a few times, you know his abilities and how they work. If not, this ability allows you to basically teleport anywhere on the map he wants to, to a degree. If you saw my first 10 things video, I talk about how the map has a grid system for better teammate communication when trying to meet up or speak about a specific point on the map. This time, however, the grid system works as a specific spawn point for where Jason chooses to morph to, which is harder still because Jason has no grid to work with. So, allow me to demonstrate. On Panarock, let's say you choose a spawn by the phone to place your traps. If you place it right on the phone, you will spawn off to the right a bit between it and the electrical box and have to run back around the house to get back to the phone. Now, this time let's say you spawn slightly off to the left of it. It will spawn you lower to the southwest of your chosen location. That's because the grid system is broken down to place Jason in different spots depending on where you place your spawn point. So be careful when choosing where you want to spawn, because a quick choice could land you behind a guardrail as you watch the car slowly cruise out of town and there ain't nothing you can do about it. It's best to just try to remember where you will spawn on certain maps for certain spawn points, but this could also be difficult because there are a lot of places for you to spawn when chasing down counselors. This thing is awesome for the sole purpose of a big F you to Jason's stretch arm strong grabs. It allows you to run away only to be grabbed again of course, but it's still nice to have an ace up your sleeve. However, it serves a dual purpose. 
It can also be used to disarm one of Jason's bear traps. Just get close to where you see a pile of leaves and kneel with the pocket knife selected and you will be given a prompt to disarm the trap with X. A for Xbox. Useful for getting repairs done on the car or putting the fuse back in the box to call the cops. This is a tip, but an important one for those late rounders and people who don't pay attention. Jason doesn't just break windows to scare you. He also does it to slow you down. Broken windows, if you go through them, will cause a small amount of damage to your character. If you watch this, you can tell when I have full health and I go through the window. And now I have a prompt to use my first aid spray. This is an important piece of information because when Jason is chasing you down late into the round, you don't want to get stuck in a house with only one broken window and one door with him hacking at it. It will slow you down and get you killed. This was something I found by accident and I'm not sure of its purpose yet. If you approach a door as Jason, you have two choices. Depending on if it's locked, you can open it or chop it down. But there is also a third approach. Hitting the X button, or A if you're on Xbox, allows Jason to knock on the door. There is no animation for this, but if you can listen very closely... You can hear the sound of knocking on the door. I don't know if this has really any application for the game, but it's just a neat little thing to do for comedic effect. Well guys, that's all I got for you this time. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe. Stick around with me for a while because I got some good ideas coming up for some future gaming stuff. See you all next time.